What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and InScape tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about interior lighting and also how you can change the colors of your lights within InScape for SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a video just uh, talking a little bit about the lighting in InScape. I have other tutorials about how to do actual interior lighting. In this case, specifically, I wanted to talk about how to add color and also just uh, kind of play around with the settings a little bit. And so I have a very simple model here. It's basically just a, a rectangular table, just enough to kind of set and cast some shadows. If I look around in here, I basically just have a box that I've created in SketchUp. So nothing too fancy. I just wanted to make a video just uh, kind of adding some lights to that and seeing what it does. So to start off, the way that you add lights in InScape is you click on this button for InScape Objects. And InScape Objects will allow you to add things like proxies and sound sources and also different kinds of lighting. Well in this case, the kinds of lighting that I want to add, I want to start off with a sphere light. If you remember, a sphere light is a lot like a point light. So it's just a point in space that emits light. And so if I was to come in here right now, first of all, you'll notice that my rendering is very dark. And so I believe in my settings, I have auto exposure turned off. If I turned auto exposure on, what this would do is this would try to expose this so that everything is visible. But you can see how because there's no light source right now, um, that's not really what we want it to do because it doesn't look very good. It's kind of this blue color and that's because there's absolutely no light in this box. So for now, I'm going to, we'll go ahead and turn auto exposure off just for a second so you can kind of see what happens when I add the light. And so to start off, I'm just gonna click on the button for spherical light. And I'm gonna click somewhere on my desk um, about where I want this to be and then I'm gonna move my mouse up. This is gonna let me set this up on the blue axis. And I'm just gonna set this somewhere up by the ceiling. Um, it doesn't really matter where at this point. So you can see how when I do this, this brings in a light an object that basically emits light within my model. And you can see how initially, first of all, your problem is even though we brought the light in, it's not very bright. So there's a few things we could do with this. We could scale it up. And you can see how when we scale it up, that means there's more surface area here where this emits light. We could also adjust our luminous intensity or the brightness of our light. And then the other thing we could do is adjust the exposure. So to start off, I'm gonna turn auto exposure back on. And you can see when I turn auto exposure back on, um, this room automatically gets a lot brighter. That's because this is increasing that exposure. If I was to turn that off and I was to drag this up, you can see how you can increase your exposure to make your room brighter. And as I increase my exposure, you see how if I get like into high exposure levels, this turns blue. That's basically because this is so overexposed that the image doesn't even really make sense anymore. So if you do this manually, you want to kind of find that gray area between um, everything being overexposed and everything not being very bright. And so in this case, InScape does a really good job with the automatic exposure. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that to start off. And so you can see how this actually gives me a decent image. Um, I get some kind of um, some dark corners and some weird things happening over here. That's because there's just not quite enough light being emitted. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this little slider for luminous intensity to the right. You can see how when I drag the slider for luminous intensity to the right, what that does is that brightens up my image. And so now I'm not getting that noise in the corner like I was before because the light is brighter. So you kind of have to work together between the exposure and the lighting that you bring in in order to create something like this. And so in this case, um, what I've been getting questions about a lot is how I change the color of the lights within InScape. So, because there's no setting in here to change color. You can kind of adjust your light source radius and some other things, but there's nothing really in here about the color. That's because the way that this works is actually pretty simple. What this does is this will actually color based on the material you apply to it. So if I come in here and I apply like kind of a teal color to this, you're gonna notice that the color that now gets applied within my model is a teal color. So if I was to apply something like a more dark blue, my lighting would be more blue. So the lighting that's created within InScape is driven by the material that you apply to the object. So I haven't done this with textures. I assume if I was to apply like a brick texture, like this one, 
the color would probably be the same as whatever color is set down below down here so kind of a brown color so the the color that's kind of applied to your texture material so you can do this with textures as well I'm not really sure why you would want to especially since these lights are invisible in your scene um, but let's take this back to kind of a teal color for right now and so this is going to work with all of your different lighting types so let's say for example that I wanted a spotlight kind of back by my back wall if I was to click on this face and then maybe move this down just slightly below my ceiling and then angle my light towards the floor so now that light has also been added to my model and uh, it's kind of getting overpowered by the power of this other light so for right now what we want to do is let's go ahead and just hide this light so that now we just have our our uh, spotlight in here and you'll notice that this turned blue again because everything had to be overexposed because there's not a lot of light being emitted so we're gonna go ahead and turn this one back up to something like 5000 for right now um, and probably what we're gonna need to do in a minute is we're just gonna have to add a couple of these lights but in this case let's say I was to use the move tool in copy mode to create a few copies of this. So let's say I made like four copies. You can see how first of all, the more lights I add in here, the less uh, noise you're getting in the corner again. And again, that's just due to the amount of light within your model. Um, but we can do the same thing here, where let's say we want these spotlights to be more of a red color. So if I find a red color like this one, and I apply that to one of these, you can see how the light that's in here turns red. So you can achieve different color effects by doing this. So let's say, for example, that I wanted some red lights and also some blue lights. Something like this. You can see how I'm able to generate that effect using different colors on my lights. And one thing I haven't tested, and maybe I should, is if I double click in one of these, first of all, I'm gonna close the InScape objects for a second. But if I was to double click inside this, I don't even know if it's gonna let me do it. Yeah, so Inkscape locks this so you can't actually get inside your component. So I was going to try to apply this to the material actually inside the component, but we'll go ahead and not worry about that for right now. I'll just reapply my red and my blue. And then let's say, for example, that I wanted to bring my uh, point light back. I just do an edit, unhide, all. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to bring my point light back now. I would just do an edit unhide all and you can see how that brings my light back and one thing you're going to notice is due to the brightness of this light and uh, the the level of brightness of the other lights this is kind of overpowering that effect so you have to be a little bit careful with the way that you do this so I'm just going to go back in and I'm just going to edit this and I'm going to bring the intensity of my point light down a little bit and in fact I may kind of move it off to the side whoops using the move tool and I may even move it kind of back this way so I'm getting some lighting off to the side but I'm still able to get this lighting effect over here and you can apply this to your other line your light types as well so if you did like a line type or something like that the other thing you could do and what I would do in this case is because these are technically spotlights it looks a little weird where you're getting the light right here um, inside your Inkscape model but you don't actually have a light source so probably what I would do in this case is I would actually apply a circle and I would try to go directly above on the ceiling. But I would actually try to create a circle with about the same radius. Above each one of these. And then I would actually apply this red material to that circle. And I would use Inkscape's materials to make that an emitter. So in this case, I would check the box for self-illumination. And you'd also have to come in here and actually set the color of the self-illuminated object. But you can see how I'm able to create a spotlight effect. And probably what I'll do is I'll go ahead and make this a component. So I'll call this red recessed light.
And then I'd probably make a copy of this. I'd make it unique. And I could color this one blue. And if you look at our image over here, you'll notice that that's not emitting any light. And so probably what you need to do is go back in and make this blue color self-illuminated or make it an emitter as well. And so I'm gonna hide my point light again. And you could probably move these up a little bit so that they're a little closer to sitting right on the face of your emitters. But you can see how you can create this colored light effect in here by doing this. And the other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could also increase or decrease the beam angle of these colors. So you can see how as I increase that beam angle, um, the cone that's created by these is adjusted as well. So you can use that to create different effects also. So that should give you a general idea of how to work with colored light sources with Enscape. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know you could do this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.